Well, uh, first off, Neil, uh, what have you been doing to stay busy? Uh, any good TV shows or activities that you care to share? Uh, yeah, I've been watching, uh, been watching Tiger King. Um, it's uh, turned into one of our favorite shows. Um, I think I think it's pretty interesting. Obviously, it's it's pretty crazy too, but um, it's uh, it's been a good watch for us. So you say uh, we and us. So uh, where are you staying and who are you with? I'm at uh, I'm at my summer home in, in Duluth, Minnesota, uh, with my girlfriend Kira and my brother Joe. Uh, my brother Joe is an equipment manager for the Omaha Lancers in the USHL, and uh, obviously their season got canceled, and he didn't want to live with mom and dad, so he came live with me. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press asks, uh, have you stayed in touch with any of your teammates during this? Yeah, well, uh, we've done a, I think we did a Zoom call last week. Um, other than that, the occasional text, uh, Snapchat, you know, just checking in with guys. So uh, we've been staying in a pretty consistent touch with each other. Awesome. So uh, Mike asks, uh, what's the longest time you've ever gone as a pro without skating? And what have you been doing to try to stay active? longest time as a pro um usually after every season uh i'll take probably six to eight weeks off without touching my skates um my usual regimen after the season is i take two weeks totally off and then i start working out again but uh actually touching skates i won't do that for about six to eight weeks so um i think we're on a month now so <laughs> we're creeping up to that six to eight week mark and uh it'll be a little weird too if it if it keeps going but uh, to stay active, uh, just been doing in-home workouts, um, uh, workouts that are, are recommended by our strength coach, um, as much as I can, obviously, uh, don't have a gym here, but, um, do have, have plenty of space. So, uh, I've been doing some in-home workouts to stay busy. And, uh, Carter Brooks from Game On Magazine asks, uh, has there been any yard work projects on your plate? Uh, have you and your brother Joe been teaching Kira some of your landscaping skills from back in the day? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know how much Joe's done, but no, we've been, we've been doing a few projects. Um, uh, uh, currently there's a barn being built. Uh, I'm certainly not building the barn, but, uh, that's something I wanted to get done. And then, uh, there's a couple other things, um, as far as, as trees and, uh, down to the lakeside, I live on a lake, so we're trimming up the lakeside and, um, you know, the, the little stuff like blowing the leaves out of the yard from the winter and, all that stuff here. You have, we have a lot of time on our hands now, so we're able to get it done. Uh, Dave Manuk from Illegal Curve asks, uh, in an interview a few weeks back, you were asked to give advice to young kids in Hermittown who looked up to you. Your advice was don't let anyone tell you that you can't. When you weren't drafted in the NHL, did this type of mentality help drive you forward? Absolutely. Uh, I think it, it definitely gave me a chip on my shoulder. Uh, there might be some people that say it gave me too much of a chip, uh, cause I, I definitely use it as a, as a driving force for me going on, um, without being drafted and, and then going into junior hockey. Um, I was always looking to, uh, to prove myself and to, and to prove to people that, that I can play in college and that I can play in pro and not only in pro, but in, in the NHL. So, um, it definitely helped. Uh, Ken Weeb from the athletic asks, uh, what stood out about your experience at the University of Minnesota Duluth? And what was your experience as a college free agent like before you ended up signing with the Rangers? Uh, my experience at, at Minnesota Duluth was probably two of the best years of my life. Um, just the camaraderie that you have with, with uh, your college teammates. I mean, you're, you're in class together uh, from nine to noon and then you're practicing together. And then you might have a night class with your teammates from five to six. Um, and then you hang out, like I lived in a, a house with six guys. So, and then you're, you're living with them at night. So, um, you know, in that aspect, you're, you're a really close team. Uh, I think no matter what, uh, so as you know, some of my best friends have come from that college team. And then, uh, my experience as a college free agent was, was, uh, pretty crazy. I don't think there's not a lot of guys that, that, uh, get to experience full blown free agency. And, and I was able to do that. And, uh, myself and my family and my agent uh, went through the whole process and uh, it was a fun process uh, a little bit stressful at times but um, ended up signing with the Rangers. Um, so Mike McIntyre again asks uh, from being traded to coming to a new country and a new team to all that happened with the Jets this year uh, how do you quantify what these past 12 months have been like for you? Uh, they've been good for me. Um, obviously when the first, when the trade first went down, um, I wasn't very pleased and I don't think anybody would be, 
but I always tell people, I think within 24 hours, uh, I was, I was cool with it. And, uh, I turned the page and, and moved forward. Um, and now I couldn't be happier to be in Winnipeg. Uh, Ken Weave again asks, uh, what are the biggest challenges to integrating into a power play that was pretty well established before your arrival in terms of getting to know the finer details of tendencies and where guys want the puck for one timers? The biggest challenge is, is uh, just to put it on Blake Wheeler's forehand. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, the biggest challenge yeah, is, is just to uh, figure out when guys want the puck, where guys want the puck, um, and then reading tendencies, obviously, too. You know, we have – uh, one of the best passers in the NHL in, in wheels and, and Shife even too. And then uh, obviously one of the best shooters in the NHL in, in, uh, in Patty line. So um, got to get those guys the puck. And then uh, we have one of the crafter net front guys in the league too. So my whole job is, is just to distribute the puck and, and make sure it ends up in the right, right spot at the right time. Uh, Dave Manuk from Illegal Curve asks, uh, you've had almost a full season playing in Winnipeg. What's been your most memorable highlight so far? Oh, it had to be that the four nothing comeback when uh, when we're <clears throat> sorry when we were down four nothing in in New Jersey there came back to win in the shootout. Um, I remember texting my parents after the game saying that that's the most fun I've had playing hockey in, in a long time. So um, coming down from four goals in youth hockey is a big deal, let alone the NHL. Um, and I, I remember even we we tied the game with like seven minutes left, and then we even had a few opportunities to win that game in regulation. So um, it, it was just one of those games that. I think uh, there's no way I'll ever forget that one. So we obviously had a few questions uh, about another Hermantown kid that got uh, signed the other day, uh, a couple of weeks ago, sorry, Dylan Sandberg. Uh, so what are your thoughts on the Dylan Sandberg signing? I'm, I'm really pumped for him. Um, you know, just, I've known him, uh, I've known him my whole life, uh, just because I have three younger brothers. So in a small community like Hermantown, everyone pretty much knows everyone. So. I think Dylan played with uh, one of my younger brothers, at least two of my younger brothers uh, for at least a year or two. Um, so I remember him growing up watching him and then just to watch his whole journey from going from Hermantown, playing a little bit of junior, then going to uh, Duluth and having all the success that he had at, at UMD and, and then signing his first pro contract. Uh, it's really cool to see. Uh, Ken Weeb on that, in that same vein asks, uh, have you offered any kind of advice uh, to, to Sandberg after he signed? Uh, I just, I just said, you know, I, I let him, uh, his family and his agent, uh, deal with most of that, but I, I did text him a few times. We were texting throughout the process too, but, um, I just gave him a helping hand, just like, uh, the older guys in, in New York and, and even Winnipeg did for me. Basically, if, if you need anything, uh, around the city or, or need some advice as far as lifestyle, uh, in Winnipeg, just shoot me a text. And, and I'm sure once, uh, once everything gets back to, uh, back to normal we'll be working out again in training and i'm sure conversation will continue then uh so kenny weeb asks uh what kind of advice or sorry uh dave manuk asks uh as uh you and samberg obviously both from hermantown uh does that make the jets the new uh favorite team in that uh in your hometown i i mean i would think it's got to be right so it, hermantown's uh a town of about ten thousand people um and you know, there's, there's only been a couple of guys that play in the NHL from Hermantown. So the fact that there's a potential of, of two former Hermantown defensemen to, to be on the same blue line, I think uh, that's got to make it the favorite. So uh, Murat to test from the, the athletic, just sort of going back again. Uh, he says last summer, you talked about the ups and downs of playing in New York and that your confidence waned a little this year. It seemed as though consistency and confidence was there from start to finish. Did it feel that way to you? And if so, what goes into that? Yeah, it definitely did. Um, I think the start is huge and I give credit to uh, my coaches for giving me the opportunity and then also to my teammates uh, more than anything because, uh, you know, you make a good play and, and your teammates capitalize on it. That makes everybody look good. Uh, and same thing when I make a mistake, uh, those guys were there to bail me out. So um, all that led to myself having more confidence and, and uh, having an overall pretty good year. And uh, Tim Campbell asks, uh, just sort of looking back at this season or the season that we're in right now, uh, who do you think should be the favorite for the Hart Trophy and the Norris? Oof. Um, that's a good, uh, good question. The Hart Trophy, um, 
I know, uh, I know Mika Zibanejad was hurt a bit, but if you look at his stat line, I think it's incredible what he did and, and just knowing him playing with him for a little over a year. Um, he does it all. He plays, he plays both sides of the puck. Um, I mean, he had a ridiculous amount of goals and in, in not as many games as other guys. Will he win it? I'm not sure, but uh, I think that's, that would be my underdog vote would be Mika Zibanejad. What about for the Norris trophy? Um, the Norris. I'd have to go. It would have to be. Uh, I can't even remember. Have to, I mean, I would say Roman Yossi. Yeah, that's not a bad choice. Uh, so Carter Brooks from Game On Magazine asks, uh, earlier you and your teammates donated a substantial amount of money to Winnipeg Harvest. Uh, what other causes do you care about and how can fans of the team get involved in giving to them during this time of need? What other causes do I care about? Yeah. Is that, the, that was a question. Um, I think there's a, there's a lot of things going on. Um, you know, the, the first thing that, that came to our minds um, were – were the, the children during this whole thing and, and them not having a meal on their plate uh, every single day. So that's, that's kind of why we decided to go with the, with the Winnipeg harvest to make sure those, those families that needed the food uh, got it and, and those kids were able to eat. So um, personally, I tend, I tend to lean that way as well as, is making sure the, the youth are taken care of. Awesome. Uh, so sort of looking ahead, a couple of people had a variation of this question, but Mike McIntyre asked, uh, what are your thoughts on return to play scenarios, even if it means playing in empty venues and into the summer, would you be in favor of this? Yeah, I, I would be in favor of it. Um, I know that there's so many scenarios out there. Um, we'd have to nail down exactly which one we're, we're talking about, but as far as, as far as playing uh, in an empty venue um, to declare, to declare a cup champion, I'd be in favor of um, I think that the way we were playing at the end of the year, hopefully we can carry that, we can carry that momentum, uh, if, and when things pick back up. And, uh, Tim Campbell in the same sort of question, uh, what, what do you think about the idea of playing each division, playing in a central location and playing all their games in one building? They've talked about, uh, Minneapolis as a possibility for that as well. Well, Minneapolis worked pretty good for me. It's only three hours south, so I'm in favor of that. Um, if it, you know, again, if it, if it works out, um, and obviously safety is first priority, um, as far as local governments and, and, uh, state governments, provincial governments, as long as they allow that and the public is, is healthy, um, I, I'd be in favor of, of playing in a centralized location without fans. And sort of bouncing back to the, uh, trophy talk, who would be your uh, favorite for the Vesna trophy? Connor Hellebuck. <laughs> no questions asked. <laughs> That was easy. Uh, Ken Weeb from The Athletic asks, uh, what did you learn about Kyle Connor's game from being around him on a daily basis instead of seeing him just twice a year in the East? Yeah, so uh, Kyle Connor and I actually played in a tournament called the World Junior A uh, Challenge in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia back in 2014 or 2015. Um, so I played with him for about two, three weeks on a, on a U.S. team, and then I played against him in junior uh, when he was playing for Youngstown and I was playing for Sioux city. Um, so I, I knew a little bit about him, uh, obviously playing with him for a short time and then playing against him a lot in junior. And then now that I've, I've fully played with him, um, I just think his skill is, is, is underrated around the league, uh, how crafty he is in the corners and how crafty he is around the net. I mean, I don't know if he's any more than 180 pounds, but somehow he comes out of the corner with the puck. Um, it's pretty fun to watch, to be honest. 